Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Barry Matthews, and I'll be your instructor or your presenter today. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, I'm a registered professional engineer in the state of Florida. I came to work for the En-ROADS group back in 1990, and for the last several years I've been working in the En-ROADS development group. And for the last three or four years I've been working on the storm and sanitary product in the development group. Uh, today what we're going to do is show you uh, some new functionality that was just introduced in 8.7 En-ROADS. Uh, we're going to show you how using just En-ROADS, not storm and sanitary, but just En-ROADS, you can get your storm and sanitary information into your cross En-ROADS cross sections. Today what I'm going to show you is I'm going to start out by doing just a quick little demonstration just to show you a road map of where we're headed and what we're going to show you how to do uh, today in our presentation. Uh, after that I'll show you how all this works. I'll show you what En-ROADS can do with the storm and sanitary data. We'll talk about what's considered a crossing element in SNS and what's considered a projected element. And then there are two uh, primary uh, approaches you can take to getting this data in your cross sections. And there's one approach using the include leaf that's just a simple approach then I'll show you a more powerful approach uh, using the custom cross sections and then I'll go on to how you can update those elements uh, in the sections if something changes like your, let's say the uh, drainage engineer moves one of the structures uh, changes the rim or invert on something and you need to update your cross section I'll show you how to update those and then after that I'll show you how to get this all set up so that it works so that you can uh, get your uh, style set up so that everything works uh, fine for your system. And then after that if we have time I'll show you how you can use the place cross-section note command which have been enhanced to allow you to annotate uh, these structures using all the attributes that are in the storm sanitary database. So I'm going to go and do a little demonstration so I'm going to alt tab over here to En-ROADS and I want to show you that uh, I don't have any data here loaded yet so we're going to, with En-ROADS, I think I'll just show you this right now. If I go to Product Add-ins, you'll notice that I'm, I'm not running anything but En-ROADS. I'm not running Storm and Sanitary. I'm only running En-ROADS. So if we go here and we load uh, an RWK, which is a project file, which contains the surface information, alignment information, and our Storm and Sanitary information, you'll see that just in, using En-ROADS, I now have a limited number of commands available on the En-ROADS pull-down under, en under the drainage uh, pull-down. So if we go to view, we can view that drainage database and we can also, if we window in here and take a look a little closer, you can see we've got some pipes, we've got some uh, inlets, and uh, we can, using just En-ROADS, we can come in and do the edit review, review one of these inlets, and you'll notice that, that what we give you in En-ROADS is the ability to review and display the data. Uh, you need Storm and Sanitary if you want to edit the data. We will let you uh, modify the styles uh, on different structures so that you can get your display like you want it. Okay, let's uh, window back out and I'll show you how easy it is to cut these cross sections at exactly the places we want. Uh, Prior to this morning's lecture, I set up an uh, import file, and this is what you'll do. You'll set up exactly where you want your sections, and I'll show you how to do that a little later. And then all you have to do is import that ASCII file, and you open it, and all the sections that you had uh, said you wanted cross sections cut are in that file. And you, as I go down here, you can see, okay, I'm going to cut one at structure CBI 33. I'm going to cut one along a line string. I'm going to do a station range. So we'll go over all of that in just a few minutes, but uh, let's go ahead and cut these sections. And they'll show up here in just a second. And what you're seeing in red is where every cross section line is, and in green is what you're seeing is uh, the band of interest for sections that had structures projected to the section. So let's take a look with the uh, cross-section viewer and just see what we've uh, what we've cut. The first couple of sections didn't have any uh, storm and sanitary data in that area but as we get a little closer 
into the project, you'll see that we do have some, uh, some inlets. We've got an inlet here and a pipe going out of it. We've got a pipe going to another one. And you'll notice that the top of this structure is not just a vault like you see in profiles, but it is actually a cell that represents your standard for what the uh, top of these structures should look like. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at a few more sections. As we go down, I'm using the cross-section viewer. I'm using my down arrow to look at the different sections. Here's one uh, on the left there that's just a structure with a small pipe going out. And as I go down through here on this section, you'll notice in the uh, orange on my screen, it's orange anyway, or a golden color, uh, is a, a pipe that is crossing the cross-section. And now we get to another section where uh, we have uh, an inlet on the left and a curb inlet on the right. And I'm just going to go through a few of these and show you some things that are important or that are very uh, nice uh, for getting data into your uh, sections. If we go down here a little ways, this white line actually is a utility. So you not only can you get your pipes and culverts and inlets and manholes, but you can get your utilities that are in your uh, SNS database displayed both as projecting and crossing. Let's go a little further. And we can also put the storm and sanitary channels. There's, well, this is a, a nice piece of functionality that will help you that, uh, you know, in profiles you have to identify from and to. Well, this evaluates all the structures in the database to see whether they are uh, going to be shown in the cross section. So these are actually in different, uh, not SDBs, but they're not contiguous. They're not connected to each other, but you can see them uh, on the same section. If we go a little further, this area in green is actually a, an SNS uh, channel that I use channel to surface to put into the DTM. So the DTM is exactly where the channel is, but the green part, if I do an edit review on that, you'll see that that is actually a channel that's in the SNS database. And if I go to the uh, next uh, section, this is where that channel is, where a pipe is spilling into that channel. So we cut it right at the end of the pipe and right at the start of the channel and it shows you both of those in the in the cross section. We'll go down. I'll show you a couple more that are of interest. Okay. Um, you'll see that some of them, there's a conflict right there that uh, someone needs to come back and resolve and see uh, if that may be an existing structure that needs uh, we need to adjust our design to to avoid that. And another nice thing is that if you look here, some of these sections are wider than the others, yet where all of these are centered about zero. That's another uh, nice piece of functionality we've uh, uh, added to the cross sections that you can center your custom cross sections about zero. Now, if you look at this one, this is one that went through a network, but you see the zero line is still lined up here. So all of these are still centered about zero and not left justified. And you have control over that whether you want them to center about zero or not. Well, let's go back and take a look at one of these uh, back here that, uh, and we'll show you how you can update those. Now, if you look at this one right here, uh, let me, I'm sorry for zooming so much, but let me zoom back out for just a second. You'll notice that this yellow inlet on the other side has both the inside and outside walls of the vault showing. Well, it looks like I, I really would like for those to be this one on this side to show the outside part of its vault. So let's use, remember we're using strictly inroads and not storm and sanitary. Let's identify that in the cross section. And we'll come over here and go to its style and say, ah, look, I made that as uh, no display. Well, let's, uh, let's go and make that the same uh, style on the outside wall as it was on the inside. We'll hit Apply, and we can go to uh, Update Cross-Section. And I don't remember what station that was at, but if I use this Pick button right here, I can just identify right in the cross-section, and it says, okay, that's 14140. 
I want to do, I could do a whole range of them in a certain area, but in this case I just want to see, work on one cross section. So I use these data pick buttons to, to pick the section I wanted to work on. I go down to the storm and sanitary tab, and here are all the items that are in that cross section. So whatever your start and stop station range is, you're seeing data for that cross section. So when I just have the same start and stop section, uh, station, then these are those uh, elements that are in that one cross section. Now if I want to, up, I could up do us all and, and, and refresh them all. Let's see how we can just go and identify this one. It highlights it for us. I'm on the refresh mode so that when I hit apply, boom, it went and refreshed that inlet. So if the drainage engineer had uh, gone and changed the rim or invert on this, then we could, he could send us the database and his, uh, if we wanted to we could uh, just load his database, do an update, and then the rim would be updated on there uh, right to the new location. And uh, so that's where we're headed today and on the end of this I'll show you a little bit about annotating. Uh, so that's what I want to show you how the, the power of the uh, En-ROADS V8.7 and what we can do with it as far as getting your storm and sanitary data in your cross section. So if we go back to our uh, my little uh, PowerPoint here, uh, Wes, I believe this information will be available for them at some point so that they can uh, go through this slide and, and remember the key points. Uh, so what I want to emphasize today, and I'm, I've probably said it too many times already, but this is just inroads, not storm and sanitary. And inroads can load a storm and sanitary database. It can view that data as you saw and plan. It can display it in the cross sections. Um, it does not have the, the profile capability, but if uh, a drainage engineer gave you a database that had profile information in it and a design file that had profiles in it, you could use the review edit to uh, identify those and see which elements those were in the profile. You can also center, like if you don't know where the structure is, you can do uh, a right mouse click in the En-ROADS Explorer and it'll have a center window, window and it'll take you right in plan view to exactly where that uh, structure is. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what we consider crossing elements and what we consider projected elements. Our crossing elements are pipes, culverts, channels and utilities. So any of those that cross the cross-section line, if their feature style is set up appropriately, and we'll go over that in a few minutes, uh, then they will show up in the cross-section. Um, the way they're shown is, is just like it goes through actually some of the same code uh, that the putting the crossing features in uh, from your DTM into the cross-section. So it's the same approach. If it crosses the section line within the width of your cross section and within the um, elevation range, then it'll be shown in the cross section. And remember, we're not uh, doing this uh, from cells where you have to have a different cell for every size and everything. We're reading these dimensions directly from the SNS database. Here's an example where on the top I have a plan view uh, at station 129 and the section line is there in red and we have a pipe P43 and by the way that pipe and these all these annotations were done with the drafting notes and I didn't have to type any of these diameters or types or IDs in it just by identifying the element it knew what to it knew what data that was and, and filled it into the cross section note down below is the cross section cut at that same station and you'll see here there's P43 and um, you'll notice that um, here's the zero and that white line is the center line. So that's what we consider a crossing pipe. Now the elements that we consider projected elements are all of those that can cross but in addition to those we have inlets and manholes and of course pumps because they're really the pumps are just a special kind of manhole. So channels can be projected, and I'll show you one of those later in the cross section where we've got a channel. On the channels, we just show the flow line, okay? We don't show the, the top wing walls because that gets kind of messy. And utilities, again, the diameters of those come right out of the 
uh, storm and sanitary database and you don't have to have a different cell for each one of those. Now the way we project those is that the elements are always projected along the active alignment and where that uh, offset intersects the cross section whether it's skewed or perpendicular then that's where it's going to be shown and we'll, I'll show you an example in just a second. Um, things that are projected we're going to give you a band of interest and a headband and a backband and if and that um, creates a polygon and if the center of the inlet or manhole is inside that band of interest then that information will be shown. So we're not going to clip any inlets or manholes if a, like the corner of the manhole is outside. We're strictly checking to see if the center of the vault is inside the band of interest and if it is we're going to show that. So um, if you have pipes, culverts, channels, or utilities, now if they go in and out of the band of interest they'll be clipped at the band of interest and I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. Now inlets and manholes if we clip through, like I said, like the corner of an inlet that's a 6 by 6 inlet, we're not going to show you a 1.2 uh, width inlet in there because that's the part that was clipped. We're going to find the major side that's the closest to the, uh, the, the bearing of the section line and that'll be the side that we project into the uh, cross section. Here's an, an example of uh, one where the, the inlet is rotated slightly and the plan view is on top and down below is the cross section and you can see that um, the center of this inlet is inside our green band of interest and that means we need to show that on our cross section and we have pipes going in and out now if these pipes had been different diameters then you would have seen perhaps two pipes one of a bigger diameter in the background <clears throat> where one of them was the one coming in and one was the one going out. Now when I talked about earlier that elements are projected along the alignment, I used this somewhat extreme example to show you, to illustrate this, but uh, let's assume this is our center line and the dashed line and this is our structure that we want to project. The red line uh, horizontal at the bottom is where our section is cut. Remember this is a plan view. Now when we project that, if, if this uh, inlet were inside of our band of interest and we project that to our structure, our, our section, we're not going to do a perpendicular projection because that doesn't really tell us anything because we're really wanting to know how this is relative to the center line so it's going to be projected, its offset will be found here and then it'll be projected along the center line onto our section. And the part where I was talking about if a pipe enters and exits the band of interest, in this case the green uh, polygon is the band of interest and I'll show you how to set that up a little later. As that pipe goes in and out then you'll see that not the entire pipe is going to be shown in the, uh, in the cross section and that is because if we had an adjacent cross section we don't want to get duplicate data on different uh, cross sections. Okay. So remember, if you need to see the whole thing, then you need to expand this uh, uh, band of interest to include the, whole, the ends of that pipe. So if you want to see that thing on the whole cross section, I'll show you how to update those a little later. You just need to make your band of interest bigger. Okay, there are two ways, now that we understand how, what's considered crossing and what's considered projecting, let's, let me show you a simple approach if your requirements are fairly straightforward for getting your data into your cross sections. Let's say for instance that you want to show everything, you're just going to cut your cross sections at a hundred foot interval and you're going to, you want to split the difference if it's uh, 50 feet ahead or 50 feet back, if there's anything that crosses the section line or is inside that band that needs to be projected then everything is projected inside that band. Then you can just use the include leaf on the create cross sections, turn on crossing and projected or only projected, whatever you want to see or only crossing. And you can cut your sections and every you'll just get sections at an even interval of every hundred feet and those elements will be put in the cross section. Let's just do a little demonstration of that. I'm going to go over to the, back to the product and let's uh, window out here and I'm just going to just for clarity on, on your behalf 
for your behalf. I'm going to delete all of those elements and just uh, view our drainage again. And let's view the center line. Okay. And now let's. Uh, it, one nice thing is it remembers which uh, custom file you had in last so you don't have to reload that every time. So let's just delete those custom sections and let's go to the simple approach. First let's make sure we're going to cut them every 100 feet. And we're going to use the include leaf. We're going to turn on crossing and project it. And since we're doing a 100 foot interval, let's say 50 feet ahead and 50 feet back we will uh, show anything that crosses or is in there that uh, has the feature style that allows it to be projected. So when we, uh, and also another nice thing to, to see is that under controls um, we have plan display and you can decide whether you want to see those planometric lines or the uh, structure band and in this case the planometric is going to, for the rest of the day is going to be red and the structure band is going to be green. Now the, I'm not demonstrating the DTM features and cross sections, but all of the philosophies of how this works applies to DTM features and cross section also. And if we, and they have their separate band, and you could turn it on also. So now let's go back. All right, we're at 50 and 50, and let's cut these. And you'll see along the alignment those bands of interest and the red line of where the cross sections are cut put on uh, displayed as we cut the sections. Let the video catch up here for a second. All right. Now one nice thing about this is that all of these bands of interest are radial relative to the center line. So even though I said go 50 feet ahead and 50 feet back, I do that along the center line so that means that it, these are radial lines and there's no overlapping. So there's not going to be any uh, slivers of pi in here where those bands overlapped. And there's not going to be a conflict of having data in uh, two different sections. Okay, let's go and take a look at what we've uh, cut. Now remember, these are just on every 100 feet. So there's no data for the first few sections. And then right here, you'll notice that <clears throat> in our case, I have a lot of storm and sanitary data. So you see all the data. So this is a crossing pipe that was in the cross section within the band of interest. Okay, or they crossed the section line, my bad. And these are two structures. So inside that band of interest, there were two structures. Maybe one was ahead and one was back that are in that band of interest for this section. Okay. Now, with using the update command, you could go and individually go to any of these sections, and I'll show you how to do that a little later, and turn on and off uh, certain uh, elements or change your band of interest for a certain section so that uh, it includes exactly what you want it to include. Um, another thing I want to show you, uh, we're trying to facilitate as many ways that uh, designers show this information as possible. And when I was doing my research on this, I, I encountered some engineers or some uh, firms that required that only that the, the structures always be projected back to the cross section. In other words, anything back station would not be projected forward. And then I also encountered some that did it the other way. Well, this facilitates that because if you want only the things ahead of the section to be projected back to it, you could make this a zero for your back band and make this 100 which is our interval so that means that everything from the next station forward back to us is going to be projected onto our section and then you don't have any uh, things that are on two different sections they're they're only on one section okay so that's how you can you can facilitate that all right let's uh, go back to our PowerPoint so I've talked about having the equal ahead and back distances and projecting ahead and back. I just want to re reiterate that the time you would use the simple approach is if you just do simple interval cross sections at a constant interval and in width and you want to show uh, any time the stuff shows up on a section uh, you want it to show up. All right. Now there's a more powerful approach which is the one I demonstrated in the very beginning using the custom leaf. 
and this is uh, on the custom leaf, you can go through and pick where you want the sections to be cut. Now in this case there's also another very powerful uh, piece of functionality and that is that you can decide this green line is the zero so you can have even though you may have varying width cross sections on your custom sections you can have them centered about zero and not be left justified and this is a section in the middle of our cross section set of plans that um, was through a network and it goes through the same algorithms that we use for the uh, profile through network Here's a plan view of that one section that we just cut. You can see that it traces its path through the structure exactly the way it does in profile. However, there is a nice enhancement here, and that is you can decide how much of the terrain before your network cross section and after your network cross section will be shown on the cross section. And you'll notice that. I only wanted to see a, uh, a smaller amount on the left than I did on the right. Perhaps it was further to my outfall point or I wanted to see what was going on out there. So this is just to illustrate that you can control that ex extended part of the section. And if I back up just a second, you can see that uh, we've got more data out here on the right where the terrain is showing than we do over on the left. Okay. So let's just do a a quick demonstration of how you would go about setting up this list using uh, the custom list. So let's just zoom out and again for clarity we'll let's select everything and delete it so that you can see afresh how we're um, progressing here. So if we do our, we view our drainage network, view our horizontal alignment, and we go back into the cross section command and go to the custom leaf. Here is where under the we're under the general right now, but if I go to the layout leaf, you'll see here where you can say align about the left edges, which is what we've had for years in inroads. But the new piece of functionality is to align that around the center or whatever offset you want. In this case, I've got it centered around zero. Now under the general. Let's just uh, window in here to a part of our network that we'll work on. And let's look at the different types of sections that you can uh, put in there. Before we had, and we still have, is the station range, perpendicular, skewed, line string. And we've added two new types of custom section called network, which allows you to say, I want to go from this structure to this structure and you can extend, this is that extend axis that I was talking about and you have different distances for the from and to and it will adjust this network and portray it properly on your cross section whether you identify the from is from the right to left or left to right it'll put it properly on the cross section and we added a second type which is I want to cut a perpendicular section but I don't want to have to calculate what station that's at I just want to pick the structure and I want the cross section to always be cut at that structure regardless of whether the drainage engineer moves that structure up or down station. If he uh, gives me a new database, I want to be able to load this custom file and have the section cut at the right spot, not at a specific station because my structure may not be at that station anymore. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Just hit this data locate button right here and let's say, okay, I want to cut one at this state, this inlet right here. I accept that and it tells me that's CBI 17. Now I can say, all right, at that one I want to project and if I look here, there's another structure here at that same section. I want to see both of those and that may have a slight deflection angle. So I'll tell you what, let's just make our band of interest a little bigger on this one. And we'll say, I want to go one foot ahead and one foot back, and I add this one to the list. All right, let's go down and get the next one. Let's say I want to do this one. It has a little bigger angle. Just for illustrative purposes, we'll make this a head and back of three. And then I want to go and get uh, one here. It has a big, a uh, whole bunch of stuff going on there. So let's just make that 20 on each side. 
and we'll add that one. Now I'm putting different bands for another reason also is I wanted you to see that when I click on one of these entries over here it'll tell me which inlet that's going to be cut at. For instance CBI 17, this next one's at manhole 1, this next one's at CBI 12, so it and it knows that the headband was 20 on CBI 12, the bands were 3 on that one and 1 on that one. So let's go and let's do uh, another perpendicular one and let's say okay I want to get uh, at that structure and that there's no other nothing else going on around there so we'll just put zero. If you put zero basically it makes a really tiny band right around the center. So you can do a lot of those uh, real quick. So you say that one, I want to go to the next one, I want to add it, go to the next one. I want to add it and now you'll see that we're getting close to some uh, interesting pipes that are coming across our roadway and perhaps we want to do a cross section right through uh, these structures. Well, Let's go ahead and do that by changing to our network type and we'll say we want to go from this structure I want to go to this structure here, not the pipe, so I'll reset and get the inlet. And let's say, uh, okay, I don't know how far I need to go, but I want to go about that far. We'll just call it 50 feet. And on the out, on the other right side, let's say, oh, I need to go about that far. We'll call that one 25 feet. Or you could leave them at those odd distances if you want. Just makes the cross section look a little prettier if you go to a nice even number. So we'll add that one. Uh, first, let's uh, say what we want there. Well, since we're going through the network, look, we don't even have to worry about a band because we want to get everything that's in the center line of that. So we'll just leave it at zero and hit add. And you'll notice that uh, it put that one right in there. Now, this first station that we have is 144.96. Well, let's say, okay, well, I forgot. There was one I wanted to put in that was back here. So let's put that one in and let's see, I want to do a perpendicular one at a structure and I don't know what structure name that is, so let's just identify that one. It finds it for me and let's say I want to do one ahead and three back and I say add. You'll notice it put that in the correct spot in the list so you don't have to worry about which order you go in because you'll see all of those added right to the list in the correct spot. So now we've got those. Another thing to remember is that <clears throat> you don't have to do just those two new types of custom sections. We have this information available for station range and what I do many times is I go out, go through and pick the ones where I know I've got to cut sections at a structure but on any of the interval sections mixed in there if I cross one I want to see the crossing pipe. So let's turn on crossing and let's uh, add a station range that goes the entire length of our alignment. So now I've got it, and if I view it, it's showing that the crossing, all crossing pipes and culverts and utilities will be shown on those sections. So let's uh, fit here and let's go ahead and uh, cut these sections and uh, apply the data button you don't see any green bands around. Well, let me back up for just a second. When I close this, it's going to say, hey, you just created a new set of sections. Don't you want to save those? If I say yes, we'll call this uh, test two. I was testing a little earlier today, too, so I already got one test in there. We'll call this test two. Save that. And now that's saved off to an ASCII file, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. So now you'll see that. If I go down here into this set we just cut, we've got all our interval cross sections and there is one where a pipe crosses. So we could go here and do an edit review and say, okay, I wonder what one that one was. You say, oh, that's P51, that's pipe 51. All right, so let's uh, go down. Another thing, and I believe this was introduced in 8.7, uh, Dave, is that, uh, that you can save a preference that will save your zoom factor. So before you'd always have to reset that 
and I knew that for today's lecture I wanted it to be 0.95 so I just went ahead and set the, the factor in my preference so I wouldn't have to reset that when I got in here. Okay, we go down through some of these and you'll see exactly where those were cut and there's one of those that was cut at a special section where we wanted it to cut. You see the structure is there, it's just an inlet that doesn't have a special top and there's a pipe coming into it. Okay, and there we go, we got several of these. And so you can see all of these um, sections we just created. Now if I go back into here, that list is still there. Now if I had gotten out of inroads and the ne that day, later that day or the next day, the drain engineer says, oh, we had to move uh, a certain section such and such down station five feet. Um, you're going to need to recut your sections. You could say, okay, no problem. All you have to do is load this um, file and it won't cut them at a, that station. It'll cut it at the structure ID name. Okay, so it remembers that in the ID name. And if I go to import and I'll look at this, uh, I'll just do an edit right on this file that I just created. You'll notice it stores, if you'll see your JBX5, I'll highlight that so you can see what I'm pointing to. It stores the structure ID. Now it will store coordinates, but they're commented. They're just for reference, just so you'll know that when this ASCII file was created, that's where these coordinates were. But you'll need to save that again if they've moved the structure so it'll update that comment. But the main point is that you don't have to go back and repick all those structures every time. The name is saved in the ASCII file and it's up to date all the time because it checks it every time it opens it. All right, let's go back to my PowerPoint. I've probably gotten ahead of myself a couple of times. There we go. I talked about the creating and the reloading. Now let's talk about the types of situations where you would want to use this custom cross-section, which I call the powerful approach. There are some uh, engineers and uh, firms and DOTs that require that you have a separate set of drainage sections. So in other words, they want one set that's your roadway sections, and then they want another set that's just drainage sections. Well, this facilitates that. I didn't have to have that range that I did where I did all the crossings in there. I didn't have to have that range turned on at all. I could have just done one set of sections that only had those at the structures and networks and culverts that I wanted to cut. Now, just like the case you just saw, if I wanted them mixed, then all I have to do is put the station range in there. And if I didn't want any of the crossing ones shown, just the I could have turned those off and just had regular sections in there at intervals. Also, if you have sections that are required through the center line or flow line of the network, then you'll want to use this custom cross-section approach. And then if you have a situation where you're required to have the sections where there are structures and at the structure, not at a certain station, but through the center of the structure, then you'll want to use this powerful approach. And that's on the custom leaf. All right, uh, as I mentioned already, I knew I'd gotten ahead of myself a little bit, but the uh, cross-sections file uh, stores the names and it's an ASCII that contains everything needed to recut the section. It knows the bandwidths, it knows whether the crossing or projected or turned on, it knows everything it needs to know in that ASCII file. And I just put a slide in here of what I showed you live just a minute ago. Okay, it, once you get these uh, structures in your cross section, then you may need to go back and update them because things have changed or there's, you know, you just need to go back and make sure they're depicting exactly what you want to show in those cross sections. And you do that by using the same update cross section command as you use for updating surfaces, components, uh, crossing features, projected DTM features, which by the way is a new enhancement to 8.7, the projected DTM features, and the storm sanitary features. Let's just do a, a quick demonstration of updating uh, some sections. So we'll just go on that last one that we were just looking at. I go to my update cross-section uh, icon on my toolbar 
and I want to make sure that I'm updating the particular station I'm interested in. So I'm going to do a data point to say I want to start on that one and I want to end on that one, which means I'm only updating that one station. Because remember, which is a very powerful thing, is that I could refresh the whole set of sections by having the station range turned off. <coughs> so the nice thing is that I don't have to go back and say, oh, oh goodness, what was the band of interest on that section and what was the one on that one? It uses the existing band of interest because that data is stored in the graphics. It knows um, what the band of interest was when it was cut, so it uses the existing one. Now, if I came in and said, oh, I really extended further than I wanted to on a certain section, you could change your range or all of them if you wanted to. Click the redefine and redefine what you wanted those bandwidths to be. Just remember that the start and stop that's listed at the top of the dialog, all the cross sections in that station range will be updated with a new bandwidth. Well, let's just go ahead and use the existing. And let's say, oh, there's a, a, a projected... Uh, uh, utility that I really wanted to be shown as a crossing utility. So let's go ahead. I don't know which one it is. I really do, but let's just say we don't. And let's pick that one by just data pointing on it. And it says, oh, yeah, that's a utility, U1. So let's, uh, oh, and I meant to say off. So let's just do that one more time and say off for U0. And when I hit apply, you'll see that that utility that was projected is turned off. Now, if I want to turn it on as a crossing element, I just hit on, I go and find it in the list, and there's U0. I want to display that on as a crossing element, and when I do, ah, there's that utility that it really I needed to show as a crossing utility. Also, let's say that, um, let's just take a look here and see what we've got. Uh, let's just say, for instance, just for example purposes, I wanted uh, a different uh, vault showing a different uh, line style on the inside of the vault. Well, I could come in using, remember, we're using just inroads, do an edit review in the cross section, find that that's JBX8 and change this style. Let's say I want the inside to actually be gray. And I have a style that's set up that the only thing different is that the, it's gray. I hit apply. Go back to my uh, update cross section. It remembers I only want to work on that one section. Let's go to refresh. Shows me only the items that are at that section. And I don't remember the names. Let's just identify that one. Hit apply and refresh and you can see that the style of that one is changed to a gray. Now, if this is the same approach we would use if um, the, the drainage engineer had changed the rim invert, the, the rim elevation. So if they change the rim elevation, all we need to do is come to this uh, cross section, identify which one, update, and uh, then it would be updated right there in the cross section. Sometimes I do that. But it, today, I want to be really clear that we're doing all of this with just inroads. So I didn't want to jump out to Storm and Sanitary and edit the, the rim elevation and jump back. I want you to know that all the things we're doing here today, so there's no confusion, is done straight with inroads. So that's a, a quick demonstration of the update functionality. Um, key points to remember, and I've mentioned both, both of these, most of these while we were talking, but uh, just so you'll have them for your reference. It works on all the sections that are in the station range that, that are shown in the start stop at the top of the dialog. Um, the bandwidth applies only to the projected features because remember anything that crosses the section line is, thing, is where the crossings will be shown. And uh, use existing means that the projected features will be updated with the same bandwidth in which they were cut and the uh, Redefine means you can change the bandwidth on any section that you want to or range of sections. All right. Um, one other point, I want to back up here for just a second. And I'm just going to go back to this uh, uh, dialog. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just show you uh, live. If on the cross section command, 
if, for instance, you wanted to highlight a range of these and change them to all crossing or projected, you can highlight and those any change you make down here will affect all of the sections that are in that uh, that are highlighted. It will not update any of the details group box because it's obvious that those are all different things. Some are you know perpendicular, some are skewed, some are line strings. So you really those don't pertain. But as far as the crossing and projected and bandwidths, you could uh, update all of those in your cross section list by simply uh, highlighting them all. All right, let's get back on track here. I put this slide in here just for a um, reference point for you later when you want to go back and look at it. But to sh reiterate also that uh, when you're doing crossing elements in the section, what controls whether or not that element is going to show in the cross section is whether you have the feature style for crossing points turned on. So you see right here, this is crossing points. Those are, that has to be toggled on for any element that you want to show as a crossing in the cross section. And it's going to be under the uh, cross section name. Uh, the, the name symbology as far as what the lines look like are going to be the cross section line uh, uh, name symbology. And the I've said it a couple of times already, but the information is coming straight out of the database. These particular uh, cross sections I cut were at a one to one, no, in other words, no vertical exaggeration. But they would have been shown as uh, as an ellipse if that we had a vertical exaggeration on there, and you wouldn't have to worry about that. We take care of that uh, for you. So that's for both the inside and outside on your pipes and culverts and utilities, and the center point. Like if you wanted to show bedding or something like that, then if you have a cell listed as the center point feature style, then you could place a cell whose origin will be placed at the invert of the pipe. So uh, just keep that in mind. Now on projected, I've shifted to a, a new slide here, and this is for projected, same type of table. It's just that here you're using the projected line segments instead of crossing points flag to say whether they'll be shown as a projected or not. Again, all the data is straight from the database. Okay. When I say that those flags that need to be turned on, that's under edit style. Uh, so you go to the feature style that's listed for the inside or outside wall, and you make sure that if you want it shown as a projected pipe, you have projected lines turned on. If you want it to be a crossing point, you have crossing point turned on. Um, earlier, you saw us uh, talked about how you could get your vault tops to show the way you want them, and actually I've I've encountered some DOTs that actually on each cross section show uh, in detail what the typical or what that uh, curb inlet looks like. So you can uh, show that by specifying what part of the top is going to be cut off and replaced by a cell. So in this case, if you look at the bottom where I've got my mouse cursor, I've said that I want the, the top two feet dedicated to um, my cell. So please don't show the vault going in that top two feet. So on a curb inlet, the throat elevation is the elevation that's stored. So from there down two feet is going to be clipped off of the vault and replaced with a cell whose origin will be right at that throat elevation. So that's how we got this to show. Now I did have to have a separate uh, cell for my uh, three foot uh, inlets and a separate one for my six foot diameter inlets um, because we're not going to scale those and read that because that that really gets complicated because we don't know exactly how uh, to draw that with all the different ones. So uh, just remember you have to have a different cell and you'll see that in the example data uh, that we have. All right, just to reiterate, in order to get that to show on the top, right here, this is the edit review, okay? And the point feature style is the one that'll be looking for the cell. And under that point feature style, it'll look at its name symbology. And then that name symbology has an item called cross section point. And when you double click on that, 
that's where you set the cell if it has a toggle for display on that's where you set the cell for those tops okay um, we're running just a, a little long but I uh, Wes is it okay if I just show them just a little bit on the the place cross section Wes says okay um, there's going to be and I'll, I'll tell you this in a minute the specifics but there's going to be a remote lecture on all uh, on the uh, drawing uh, annotation in the future and I'll give you details on that in just a minute but I just want to show you a quick thing as it relates to storm and sanitary what we've added in 8.7 is um, on the place cross section note if you hit this expand button here it'll expand that dialog so that you can see what to type in and what uh, values you want shown and the nice part is that every attribute that's in your storm and sanitary database can be shown in these notes so you just expand the part that says storm and sanitary and pick the right kind in this case it's going to pick the ID for me when I annotate the class and you can actually do arithmetic in these because remember it's the throat the elevation that's stored in these uh, curb inlets so I know that on my inlets that it's 0.625 from the throat up to the uh, rim so I can do an, uh, an arithmetic right here of adding 0.625 to it and it will show the rim at the correct elevation this uh, new field is actually a user data field so if you create user data if you have if your drainage engineer has user data on uh, an element in the SNS database it will be annotated um, so let's uh, take a look and oh here's one right here so here uh, we annotated that and right out of the database it got the um, the inlet name the inlet class the did the calculation on the rim to con to compute what the uh, rim was based on the throat there's my special note that was on a particular inlet and what's really nice is that it knows that the even though this this cross section may have been at station 140 plus zero zero that I projected this inlet back to the cross section but it's actually located at station 141 39 98 with a certain offset and this is the exact offset relative to the center line of the alignment and I'll just show you a quick demonstration of that uh, let's uh, zoom out here a little bit and I'll go over here to this inlet I'll scoot it over just a little bit and let's pick our cross place cross section note actually I'm gonna window in and get it just like I want it. all right and we'll do our place cross section note it's actually froze to the last one it remembered not froze but it remembered the last note that I placed in cross sections so I don't have to go and pick it every time and there's that information I was showing you and here's where you can get all the information from the storm sanitary database and put it in but this is one I've already set up so I'm just going to hit apply go and identify and it doesn't matter where I identify on that inlet it knows where to put that information now this particular inlet did not have any um, user data put on there so it didn't have anything in that new field um, that was one I was playing with earlier and I, I didn't put any user data on this particular one if we go and edit and re uh, let me get out of this note place here if I go to edit review and I look at this one the user data that I'm talking about is over here and so I didn't have one called new field this one was called installation note okay so I didn't have a user data field called uh, new field so it didn't display anything in the new field all right so let's go back over here to the uh, PowerPoint and uh, so just remember that it gets all of this information straight out of the database so that you don't have to you know do an edit review type it into the note what the name of it was and what the station and offset you have to do one of those station offset reports and then come back and put it in it knows just by picking it which one it was all right um, I told you earlier that I'll give you details there is a remote lecture on 915 that goes over the drafting tools in depth so I because I know I flew over that really fast 
but it'll show you exactly how to set up all the settings on those drafting notes. But the nice thing to remember is, if I'm using this as an engineer and not as a system administrator, I don't have to worry about that. I just go and pick the note that I want to use to annotate, and boom, everything's already set up. All right, let's just have a little summary of what we've uh, covered today. And mainly, I uh, can't say it enough that we're doing all this right in inroads, just inroads. We can load an SNS database, review it, display it, both in cross section and plan. We can annotate it with the place cross section notes. We can update the SNS data in the cross sections. Uh, that's all stuff that we can do using inroads uh, with version 8.7. And this concludes our lecture uh, today on uh, Bentley Inroads 8.7 Storm and Sanitary and Cross Section.